Okay, uh, just got done eating dinner. Uh, <laughs> overstuffed ravioli out of a can, straight out of the can. It, it's cooked twice, so before you judge me, or before you get too fearful of my health, just bear in mind I'm working with a compromised immune system anyway right now as it is. So <laughs> what are you going to do? So uh, I'd already made the video on Maseroth, uh, being, Maseroth, being, Maseroth being the stars and that uh, it's, a, it's a message of hope that it's written in the stars that we have a part to play in this. And I've already touched on the idea of entropy in this, but uh, entropy in, in physics is a very misunderstood notion, meaning uh, taken to mean uh, as chaos and, and just disorder. But it's not just chaos and disorder. It's a, it's a chaotic force that generates order in its wake. So entropy is a generative force, meaning it generates something that is the cause, and then the effect is an, a rearranging into order. And so we can take a part, we can play a part in that. Uh, and that part is called evolution. Now, you may be... You may be thinking that uh, evolution means one thing, but what it what it means is an elevation in consciousness. We're highly evolved beings because we can self reflect. It's not completely clear whether or not other animal species can do what we do when we self reflect. We know that they have highly advanced uh, technical language that they perform and. Uh, produce but we don't it's not entirely clear that they can reflect uh, it's clear that they have spindle neurons which are neurons in their brains like we do which allow them to be capable of complex language uh, that's similar to speech like octopus or octopi they can talk to each other like we do they're actually they're one of my favorite animals they are very very highly fascinating. If you ever get a chance, watch a documentary on the insane biology of, of octopus. Pardon me. In fact, there's a video on YouTube that's called The Insane Biology of the Octopus, which isn't the only one out there. It's not the only one I would recommend, but it's one to get started. It's, it is good. It is very good. So, I, actually, before I, I continue on this entropy evolution concept that I have written down here, I want to uh, I want to expand and elaborate on the Masroth concept. It, is that all religions truly stem from well, uh, an an older cult, an old, an ancient cult? of astrotheology and uh that means that they worshiped the stars they they had they made these gi gigantic temples that apparently were aligned with uh different solar systems and different stars for what reason we don't really fully understand and comprehend but we know and understand that they based their religious religious practices on this and uh Santos Bonacci and Jordan Maxwell, and uh, there are several others that get into the astrotheology of modern day Christianity as well as other modern day religious uh, orders. And uh, it's also where we get our zodiac from. The zodiac astrology comes from astrotheology. The whole point is it's a message of redemption. Redemption meaning meaning going back to this evolution entropy dynamic that I'm that I'm talking about is that we can redeem ourselves by doing the right thing. And it's not a matter of doing so in the eyes of these perceived 
alien intelligences that we think may be out there. Uh, it's 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 basically an imprint of our ancient mis- mysterious memory uh, because there's no reason why these stars these uh, spiral galaxies should be in this in this format there's no reason there's no earthly reason Let's see what I'm doing here uh, there's no reason why these uh, galaxies are should be similar sizes there's absolutely no reason at all for it except for that it was there waiting for us to discover as a message to us from us and uh, I can get into this uh, briefly but um, I found something out the other day while in passing uh, that there was this interview with the son of L. Ron Hubbard which was a contemporary as well as a colleague with a man named Jack Parsons which uh, he essentially developed and built all of our modern rocketry. So he's basically responsible for us going to space, uh, Jack Parsons is. Now, the son of L. Ron Hubbard was describing his uh, basically satanic lifestyle, how how he was a wicked man, really, uh, basically. Now... Throughout the course of his description, he mentions about the Scientology, which is an offshoot, uh, or it, it was developed by L. Ron Hubbard, uh, based on his book of Dianetics, and he briefly mentions this in passing. I, I just happened to pick up on it because I was listening. Actually, I was kind of half distracted at the time, but I, I was listening anyway because it was intriguing to me. And he said the Scientologists believe that we've been around for 74 million years and that we created this reality. Now, if you've been paying attention to anything that I've been saying on this channel, now I'm not saying I'm a Scientologist by any means or by any stretch of the imagination, but if you've been keeping up with my channel, you already know that I'm a huge Neville Goddard fan and that I talk ad nauseum about how everything is you pushed out. Now, when he said this, I was like, oh, 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 I may be into Scientology, incidentally. I'm not really because there's things that they do and other things that they believe that I really truly, just truly do not believe. But when he said that, I was like, dude, there are people out here because the, the whole idea of us being around as modern humans for 20,000 years, according to the mainstream historical uh, uh, record – is completely bogus. It's so just ridiculous. How in the world did we make this stuff? It, it's it's redundant, is what it is. It is and it, it's a it's a propaganda tool. It's complete uh, fodder. It's nonsense. It's a, a smokescreen to hide the truth. But uh, this 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 uh, idea of Masroth, the stars. These spiral galaxies is a mirror of us. It's mirroring the fact that we're looking for it. It's like, ah, I'm right here. I got a message for you. The message is a message of redemption, of hope. And uh, I want to get into this in terms of evolution. That's our evolution is to evolve to a state where we're, it's not inertia. It's entropy. Entropy being where we're taking part in the reordering of the universe, of the reordering of our minds, of reordering of life itself. Now, evolution is one term that you've probably heard of that I'm going to mention. Another term that you've probably never heard of, which I I personally got from a man named Mark Passio, which I've also already mentioned. You need to check him out. Check Mark Passio out. He is a genius. Of course, he... He could stand to see things a little bit deeper like Neville Goddard does, but I'm not I'm not chastising or criticizing him for that for that purpose because we still have a tangible reality that we have to deal with. 
and that's what he approaches his entire subject line uh, as. He, he, he treats it as, hey, this is a real thing that's going on. This is reality as it is. But this is this is how we got we got to deal with it now. He could still stand to understand it in terms of what Neville Goddard says. Now, it's not just a message of redemption; it's a message of retribution, Mazaroth, hope, a message of hope. That's what that's what this is. That's what all this is for us to find the evidence of what we we've been looking for is a message of hope. Uh, and to be aligned with this force of evolution is called entrainment. E N T R A I N M E N T. Entrainment. And this is not original. I did not come up with this myself. There's actually a gentleman that wrote a book that's called Entrainment, and it's about aligning your vibratory self with that of the universe of reality itself and uh, I I looked that up because or I found it because I was looking for anything along those lines to, uh, to align with the rhythm of life and the rhythm of the energy of life and uh, the reason why is because years and years and years ago, when I was a teenager, I found in this book about how it was talking about how you can be lucky by aligning yourself with the rhythm of life. And so y- your pace goes along with the rhythm of life instead of against it. And I thought that was such a, a powerful idea. For years and years, I looked for anything that was a parallel to it or similar to it or anything. And I finally found this book. Now, in this concept of entrainment, the idea is discipline equals development. And what you're developing is the evolutionary capacity to love, to to dare to assume love. And it's life-affirming and compassionate. Like I said in uh, an, another video about 80-19-1 cho- choices being quotidian choices. It's love and compassion. Now... Uh, one thing that I do want to mention is uh, that we're here for a reason. That's what I'm saying. That's what all this is about. That's what all this is amounting to. Hey, look at that. I've got a lot more. Actually, I, I have more here that I would love to go into. I'm going to make another video based on just this one page because there's some really deep stuff there. But uh, it's not going to be in this video, but uh, maybe perhaps the next one. Because I don't have enough lighting in here right now. It may seem like I do. <laughs> but that's just lighting me up and nothing else uh, 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 that I can really uh, use. But uh, what all this is reducing to is a mentally fit life of hope. Now, I'm going to tell you all a story about something that happened to me that really kind of cements this and it's a personal story. So it it may not resonate with you because you may not have had a, uh, uh, a, um, experience like this, but I had, I I have a twin sister and at one time I was staying with her in, uh, Nolanville, Texas. It's in central Texas near Austin, Texas. Now she had a boyfriend forgive me she had a boyfriend of the name at the the time named Heath and this boyfriend came to stay with us and he brought with him a few animals of his own whereas my sister already had a few household animals now several of the animals that she had were dogs and two of the animals that he brought that I can recall were cats and one of these cats did not do dogs at all was not into the dogs i didn't really do to have anything to do with anybody or people uh, likewise but this cat was drawn to me and uh he said that the story behind this cat was that he found it as a kitten down on a downtown street on on a on a curb and it had already been 
neutered. It had already been declawed as a kitten. So someone had already taken the time and the money and the effort to uh, do these procedures. And then apparently just left the cat out. Well, he, he named this cat Salem. And when he came to stay with us, the cat was so drawn to me, it would always come into my room. And uh, it just kind of gravitated toward me. And so it was, it just kind of naturally occurred that this guy gifted me with this cat. Well, sadly, uh, throughout the course of events, I I lost the cat over time. It it was really a a heartbreak. But this cat... is a perfect example of what Donald Hoffman in his data structure theory uh, when he talks about a bat in the face he, he, he talks about his data structure theory and he says now a bat flying in your face is that a bat flying in your face well this was a cat that came into my life that changed. I, I I had already been this, uh, on this path of grooming myself spiritually and, uh, growing in enlightenment and in knowledge and in wisdom. But this cat did something changed my life forever because this cat would come and comfort me when I was having a bad day. I didn't have to call him over. He just knew. He knew he would come over and start loving on me just because I was having a bad day. I don't know how this cat would have known. And not only that, not only that. Hold on. Forgive me. Forgive me. Not only that, but this cat would come and see because cats are nocturnal creatures. And this cat was no exception. He he would come and lay down with me. And lay down on my legs, specifically, like, it was a security thing. (laughs) He would lay down on my legs, and I toss and turn a lot when I'm falling asleep, typically, but not when this cat laid down on my legs. He laid down on my legs and even added some additional firmness in his weight, like, no, no, it's time for you to rest. And that's what this cat would do every night. And he would wait until I fell asleep, and then he would get up and do his nightly cat stuff, whatever that was. Which was probably grooming himself and lounging, whatever, but every single night, this cat would comfort me. And when I, or he would uh, tuck me in at night, uh, if you think of it like that. So, this is a perfect example for me that there are things that happen in the world and in your life that will wake you up to the reality that it's not all as what it seems. This cat opened my eyes to a world that I didn't know existed before, that there was a such thing as love, even though this is across species in the animal kingdom. Of course, there was another animal there that I really bonded with, which was, uh, a a dog named Simon and he he passed sadly I don't I don't know what became of Salem I uh I don't want to get into the story but I I had to I wound up having to leave him with some people that I was staying with because I had to I had to leave excuse me and uh I don't know whether they kept the cat or not it's it's just a really sad ordeal uh but I can't put it into words how this applies. But if you're following me and if you're paying attention, then maybe perhaps you'll understand. Maybe perhaps you have your own story of a person or a cat or an animal or even a something that wasn't alive. Something like a, a doll or a teddy bear, you know, that, that you can relate to this with. 
But that's, that's my personal story as to the message of hope. There is hope. There is a message of hope that's written in the stars. So this idea of entropy is misunderstood. My life was messy then, just like it always has been, just like everyone's is. But in the chaos came a, uh, an order. I hope that's been helpful. If so, mention so in the comments. Of course, I already know one person that may wind up uh, commenting on this. Some of them that I already know, and they have cats. And I know how strongly they feel about their cats. Because they uh, they shared with, uh, with me uh, a story indirectly about one of their cats. So, even all, all the same still... Please feel free to comment and join the conversation. You are loved.